Hello everyone, uh, I'm James Gordon, I'm joined by Drew Derbyshire, we're here for a Love Rugby League weekly special live from Barcelona, we thought we'd come to you at tea time, mainly because we got to Barcelona just before lunch and Drew was hungry so we couldn't do our usual lunchtime slot. We're going to just talk about um, Barcelona, the opportunity it brings, the look ahead to Catalan, we're going to have a course the other five Super League games this weekend, we're also going to talk some of Bash, we're going to talk some news and bits and bobs as well, Drew. Um, you can see the pool, Drew's being in. I didn't brave. It's a bit cold in there oh, for me. Very cold. Very uh, cold. I, th I think I've got cold burn if if, um, if there's such a thing uh, called cold burn. But uh, uh, it's it's great to be here, isn't it, James? And I can't. I just can't wait to get to the new camp on Saturday. Yeah. So we're going. We've got captains run tomorrow. Well, we haven't. But we're going to captains run tomorrow. There's a, a fans event for Wigan fans as well. We'll be down at there. So if there's any Wigan fans watching, come and say hello to us. We'll be there at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon the game is of course Saturday and we will talk about the other games for this weekend as well on, on the show but um, obviously we're looking forward to it otherwise we won't be here massive I suppose it's an interesting one because obviously people talk about it being a big opportunity and a massive opportunity and um, you know for rugby league um, it is going to be pretty special isn't it playing seeing the rugby post I mean we've seen the videos this week haven't we the rugby post at the new camp that's going to be pretty special seeing I just, I just, I just think it's so exciting for for rugby league, and I, I, to be fair, rugby league is quite a negative sport at times. We're we're, we're mainly northerners, aren't we? Who follow rugby league, and we're quite negative in what we say anyway. I'm included in it as being one of them, but I think I, I've seen nothing but positivity about this uh, new camp clash. Uh, I've seen St Albans fans tweeting, Warrington fans tweeting, Old KR fans tweeting saying. Uh, the, the the jealous that their team's not playing here at, at the new camp. I think it's it's brilliant, and we're, it was only a couple of a, a weeks ago we, we watched the likes of Messi and Busquets etc. grace the new camp turf in the Champions League. Uh, it's it's fantastic for the sport, and, and now we're going to be witnessing some of the world's best in, in the likes of Sean O'Loughlin and Greg Bird playing at, at the new camp. Do you do you think we we probably guilty too much of saying? Um, of, of maybe overthinking it a little bit and always instead of just getting on with it and saying right look we're having a game at the new camp do you think we're always a bit guilty of overthinking oh well this will be you know this is great for development and great for the game when we should just let it happen and then you know naturally things like that yeah work. I, I, I do agree with you in a sense though James I, I'm not I'm not saying it's going to change the face of rugby league and I'm not saying it's going to grow the game in, in uh, Catalonia um, it's but it is, it is what it is. It's a rugby yeah. league match at the new camp. It, it, it's we, we've never seen it before. It's it's one of the most iconic stadiums in the world. It's one of the best stadiums in the world. One of the biggest stadiums. I've seen a couple of comments uh, suggesting that it's going to look rubbish with it only a third full or whatever it is. It's what what is it? Ninety eight thousand capacity, uh, and they'll hopefully be just over thirty thousand. Uh, in the venue, which will be a Super League record, so we've got to look at the positives as well. Uh, we've got a couple of comments coming in. We've got David Taylor saying we should have stayed in Blackpool. Lovely. We were a bit, we were a bit worried actually, having looked at the weather forecast. There's, it is forecast to rain here tomorrow and Saturday, and we was we were checking the Blackpool weather forecast just to see whether it'd be nicer in Blackpool, but. Uh, I think apparently it's going to rain there as well. To, to be fair, it's, it's pretty good here. It's just the it's the, gone the cloudy it's now. Freezing cold. It's cloudy now, but yeah, it was blue skies when we arrived this afternoon. Um, so obviously, we, it's going to be a Super League record crowd. Um, is that now? A, do you think that'll be a stick that Super League tries to beat every year now? Do you think? Well, it should be, shouldn't it? Well, the, this, I, I, I'm all, all for taking games to new venues. Uh, I know we're. we're there's a, a, a little bit of speculation surrounding the, the the Magic Weekend in the future of that. Is it going to be at Anfield next year? Is there going to be a Magic Weekend next year? Or if so, will it be at the new Spurs um, Stadium uh, down at South? So it, I'm, I'm all for taking rugby league to new venues, the, the new camp. It's, it's relatively close on a, on a flight from yeah. from England in the UK. Um, and it's it's brilliant. It's, but Barcelona's brilliant. There's plenty, plenty of touristy things to do. We're um, uh, we're right by. I know one of our fans commented. I don't know if he's watching this video, but one of our one of the people who commented on the picture we put on earlier knows what hotel we're at. Uh, so I mean, it, it, it's, we're we're right like by it. we're right by Mount Tibidabo for uh, those friends fans watching. 
Um, so we're going to go up there at some point. It's just to our left as we are here, but um, looks very high and very very steep. Yeah. There's, there's a there's a theme park. There's legs. a theme park at the top as well. So we'll see what happens there. Um, so team news. Sam Tompkins the main one, isn't it? That's yeah, not playing yeah. for Catalan. Massive, uh, not massive blow for him really because. Um, I mean, we'll we'll no doubt speak to a few of the players and stuff tomorrow. But I suppose as much as yeah, it's just another league game. You know, you're not going to yeah, get it's... any other opportunities to play at the new camp. Well, it, it would have been the biggest stadium he's ever played at. Uh, it would have been probably the best stadium he's ever he's ever played at. It's a massive blow for Sam Tompkins, massive blow for Catalan. Obviously, there's a nice storyline there uh, with Tompkins in the fact that he obviously used to play for Wigan, won plenty of trophies with uh, Wigan, uh, and obviously it was on the the hiding of Wigan at 42 nil at the DW Stadium earlier on in the season. It probably would have, would have wanted to uh, make amends with the Dragons and and come back to haunt Wigan at the new camp, but it's not to be. We've got Sam Cassiano's back for the Dragons, Greg Bird's back, uh, Lewis Tierney's back to face his former club, so there's plenty of nice little storylines there. I mean, it's an interesting game because obviously, you know, and 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 you know, I shouldn't, I should probably, this probably contradicts what I said earlier about overthinking. We want it to be a good game, don't we? Because yeah. you, you want it to be, you don't want it to be a blowout. And we've seen both Wigan and Catalan are capable of dishing out blowouts and receiving them. And you're sort of hoping that, you know, they both turn up and play the way they can be. Because if, if they can put on a spectacle, a bit like what Wigan did last week, to be fair, against Warrington, if you, if you, could, if you could package that, what happened last week, and put that at the new camp, you know, you'd like to think that only positive things would get said. Yeah, exactly. And... Going, just going back to, to that comment what you mentioned before about it's, it's not necessarily about all oh, that it's going to make rugby league the, the, the greatest sport and the biggest sport in the world. We, we think it's the greatest sport, but it's not going to uh, go global. I, I did see a, an article, I think it was on the BBC Sport website, uh, I'm not so, I, I, I think it was anyway, uh, and it said something like that uh, it was going to make the game global uh, with it being at the new camp, but I don't think it will. But I certainly think it it raises awareness of rugby league in Catalonia. It certainly helps the Catalan Dragons out. Uh, I just can't wait for it, James. I'm I'm buzzing. I, I know it's only Thursday as well, and we've got another two games to go until uh, game day. But obviously we're going to the captain's run tomorrow, so hopefully keep your eyes peeled as well on loverugbyleague.com for some uh, interviews. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we'll stop talking about Wigan for a bit. Um. Uh, David Taylor, by the way, says uh, fantastic opportunity. To Fantastic opportunity for rugby league. Hope it gets the promotion it deserves. Hope BBC picks up on it. We've just mentioned the BBC. Yeah. Uh, hit the license fee, but uh, uh, they are the UK's biggest broadcaster. Well, you have got a point there. And I d I, to be fair to the BBC, they smashed it with the Challenge Cup coverage last week. Yeah, with, uh, well, apart, from them, apart from that interview on the pitch stuff. Yeah, that that needs to go, doesn't it? Yeah, but yeah. but I, I always like. The I always wonder what they'd BBC. say if we, if you know, like if we started saying, "Oh, we want to go and interview." People on the uh, on the pitch. So what's the latest what on your future? Just yeah. to try. You can. Yeah. You sometimes struggle to speak to players at normal times, let alone on the pitch. But anyway, uh, Leeds cast tonight. Uh, Leeds. It's officially opening a north stand. I think. Yeah, is that, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. So, so is that all done now? So we're we're open to track down some of our colleagues from various publications. We with Julie Stott from the Daily Star, and Daily Mirror, and all those places. She was on our flight this morning, so hello to Julie if she's watching. We're going to meet up with some of the guys to watch Leeds cast later on, hopefully. Um, obviously, Leeds are in a bit of a funny situation now. Obviously, you know, are they going to stick with Agar for the rest of the season or are they going to try and bring somebody in? But I, I, don't, I don't think they'll stick with Agar for the rest of the season. I don't think they can, can they? they uh... Could, you, because that, that's right in the season off, isn't it, really? Because uh, I think... Well, I mean, they're, they're not going to make it a five, are they? No, they're it's, not going to make it a top five. It's, it's no disrespect to Agar, but obviously he said that he doesn't want it, so I think you need to... You, you need Something needs to happen sooner rather than later because it, there's no point in him staying in the job all, all the season. Uh, because it's just right in the season off. They're not going to make the top five, but they're not going to get relegated. Uh, is London, it? London fans cover your ears. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, quite, it's quite clear, isn't it, that... But it's not. It's not. It's fizzled out. That, I that think, magnificent I think, start yeah, that I think, London made. To I the think season. you'd be surprised if London were able to string enough wins together for them to survive. But Magic Weekend, of course, Leeds play London. So you know, imagine if London knock off Leeds at Magic Weekend. All of a sudden, everyone's a bit worried. There's a bit of an argument that says that obviously Dave Ferner came in off season, and then obviously they had new players and stuff. Is there a bit of an argument to say, well, if you get your coaching for the rest of this season, he can weigh up the players he's got. He can. He can get bedded in. He can get games under his belt, with the view to hitting the ground running at the start of next season. Yeah, that, 
Well, that, that's what I do. Uh, if if I was a, in charge of Leeds, I, I, I'd just try to, to find my perfect fit sooner rather than later. Uh, but obviously Dave Ferner was meant to be the, the perfect fit according to uh, the director of rugby Kevin Sinfield so uh, it's, it's interesting times I think I think the pressure is the pressure mounting for Kevin Sinfield as well at least you think well I mean he got the sort of a bit of a vote of confidence didn't he from from Gary Everington and we'll, we'll see I mean we we're, we're sort of leaning towards Sean Wayne aren't we I think for the I, Leeds job I, I, I'd be surprised if anyone gets it but Sean Wayne at this stage, Sean Wayne is still in that one or two day per week um, high performance coaching consultancy role with Scottish Rugby Union. Uh, but I think he's, he's very hands on, isn't he, Sean Wayne? He, 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 he's, he's previously mentioned in the past that it's an eight day a week job being a yeah, rugby league yeah. coach. Uh, but I think he embraces that and I think he likes that fact. Um, so yeah. I think I think we. Uh, uh, I'd love to see him back in rugby league, and I think it will be with Leeds Rhinos. David's popped up and said, "What if they'd been a still been a Super Eight? But I actually think that teams like Leeds are at more risk of going down now. There's not Super Eights, if that makes sense. Because I think, I think what what generally was happening when Leeds, Warrington, and whatever got yeah. finished in the bottom, it, yeah. they just waltzed through it, didn't they? Whereas ultimately, the longer the season goes on and Leeds are still down there, the more anxious they're going to get, whereas what was happening with the Super 8s was they knew that as soon as they got to game 23, it was a clean slate and they know if they won four, maybe five, well, four of those games in the Super 8s, they'd, they'd be, they'd be alright, so... Yeah, know, I don't think it makes it, like, I, I genuinely don't, I'm not, I'm not worried about Leeds suffering relegation, uh, like, that's not going to happen. Uh, there's there's worse teams in the league at the minute yeah. than, than than what Leeds are going through. Even even though some some people would love to see the Rhinos uh, face the drop, I just can't see it myself whatsoever. I, I just can't I just can't picture them being in the championship. I can't picture them getting relegated. I, I just can't. I, they, they won't finish bottom of the league. It's simple. Yeah. It's, uh, over over it's Super League, other games in Super League this week. Um, we got Saint Salford is the Sky match tomorrow. You can't really look past the St. Helens win at home, can you really? No, I think I've, in my in the media prediction tipping league, I think I've gone Saints by 26 to 28, I think. Salford obviously got this worry now that players are being unsettled because they're out of contract. And well, I've, I've noticed in the, in the when I was doing my match preview for the Rugby League this week that uh, Jake Bibby and Josh Ward have been dropped from the team and they've recently been linked with moves away. Um, it's a, it's a bit of an awkward one, isn't it, for Ian Watson? It, well, what, what do you do? What, what, what can you do if you're Ian Watson? You, you, because he's it, openly admitted that players are, are, not, are knocking on his door saying such and such club have, have come in for me, they've offered me this. And, and Ian Watson's openly admitted that Salford can't improve the contract's offers because there's simply uh, nothing left in the bank as it stands at the minute. And I mean, I, I mean, the, the, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't like the May first anti-tampering deadline. I know it was sort of brought in because the NRL do it a bit earlier. I never understood. I never saw what the problem was with having it at September the first. I can understand a little bit that players, you know, they want to get their future se secured well, as early as possible. But then, surely, if you're playing well for your club, you get a new contract at the club you already are anyway. Yeah, I, I, I do kind of kind of agree with you, but if you've not had the best season, then you, you are struggling. And but I mean, the argument is, is that you you could you you know there, there will be players out there now that have already signed for another team for next season. We're not even halfway through this season, no. or we're only just about halfway through yeah. the season, and they're gonna and you know rugby league's the sort of sport where you need to be hundred percent full blooded. You need to know that the bloke next to you is hundred percent for the cause, and and obviously if people signing elsewhere, they're sort of moving away from that, aren't they? Yeah. No, no, I do, I do agree. And when it, Watson was having uh, his little rant about the um, the deadline, he, he, he suggested straight to where uh, why can't it be near the end of July? Yeah, even like, even point. if you did, you know, like when the you transfer like window, the when, the the transfer the window ends, when, when the transfer window ends, no one can move this season. Yeah. Why don't you just have it there? You know, yeah. as soon as that ends, right, you can talk about next season. So that's another interesting debate. See how Salford we got on tomorrow night. Um, other games, uh, David, not, David Taylor is going back to the new cap game again. I see the Dragons have listed the uh, 1 to 13 plus the subs. Um, some later signings missing, like Sam Tompkins, but at the start of the season, he was the best line. He's got, he's got a point to be fair, and 
uh, with Cassiano, uh, it's, it's only been boosted, really. Well, I mean, obviously now you look at, you know, Warrington play Hull this week um, on Saturday. Below Saints and Warrington, there's pretty much it's a free for all, yeah. isn't it? Now, and like Hull are a good example of a team that don't seem to get an awful lot of credit, Hull, but they, they get results. You know, they have some shockers when they played Warrington at home, they had an absolute shocker, so they'll be looking at. But are Hull capable of doing that and turning that around when they play Warrington this weekend? Yeah. I, don't, yeah, I don't think, I don't think it's like you said, James, it's. It, Saints and Warrington are running away with it this year. I'll be, I'll be surprised if uh, anyone wins trophies that, that aren't Saints or Warrington. Uh, Warrington is struck very strong at home. Uh, they were resilient against Wigan last week. A whole, they're, they're playing it okay this season, but they could be far better as well. I, I still think there's another gear for Hull. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 I think Hull reached the potential that she. I this think Hull get a lot of stick. For, you know, and yeah, they do have the odd result now and again that makes you it's, think. I think it's because the squad's much better than what recent results have gone. By. I mean, like, I mean, obviously last season they had that, they had the horrendous one last season. But I think, I think generally speaking, Lee Radford and Hull, you know, fairly solid. And, and obviously they're one of these clutcher teams that includes Catalan, it includes Wakefield, you know, you know, even Wigan now are, are yeah. sort of working their way up there. Well, that you know. Only three of them can make the playoffs. Yeah, and then Morgan Williams says, "Have you seen how strong the whole team is this week?" Well, they have got Jamie Shaw back, which is a big, big boost uh, for them. Danny Washbrook's returned from injury, and uh, Jordan Thompson has also come into the side. So it's, it is much stronger than what we've seen in recent weeks. But Warrington, if they're on form, they're on form, aren't they? And they can really turn it on. Uh, we've seen that earlier on in the season at the Kcom Stadium when Blake Austin. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Ran the show and th sold a couple of cheeky dummies in the in the process as well. Uh, I'm also hearing that Kevin Brown's. Um, well, yeah, he was on, training on this week. Yeah, yeah, he was training uh, this week. But but it's interesting that one with Kevin Brown because he's off salary cap, isn't it? But then they've not. But is he off salary the cap? They got the exemption, they did, they did, yeah, but, but then but they haven't used it. Yeah, they, yeah. They've not used the dispensation, mm. so I don't. I, I, I certainly think the way I mean you you think, you'd think he'd, he'd probably it. he'd probably get into the Warrington team, wouldn't he? Yeah, he'd get he'd get. He'd probably get over Patton. Yeah, yeah. Um, Patton's done okay this season, but I think what, uh, Kevin, Kevin Brown's stability and his leadership that he'll bring, especially later on this in the season, could really benefit the Wolves. Yeah. Uh, I'm hearing that he could be back sometime in July, um, maybe early August. So uh, it's going to be interesting. See what to, happens there. What, what, happens. what other games have we got this week? We've got. Uh, You've done a few pretty. Oh, go on. Shea Robert Smith, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Morgan Knowles for the Britain part. We've had this discussion a few times this season, James. Uh, he's, he's been on fire for Saints. He'd be in my Great Britain squad. I'm not. I'm not saying he'd be in my 17. I don't know if he'd be in my 17. Uh, I'd have to, to plan my team out on paper, but uh, he'd definitely be in my squad because he's been one of Saints' best forwards this season. Certainly, an unsung hero in Super League. Yeah. He'd, he'd, if it was a 25 man squad, he'd, he'd make that for me, definitely. Um, the other games in Super League uh, London versus Wakefield at the Ealing Trail Finals in the capital. Uh, that's going to be an interesting one because obviously the Broncos beat Trinity uh, earlier on in the season. I think they've only they've only won three games so far of London. They've got, uh, a they've got that's Wakefield, their chance, isn't Lincoln, it? The home, games are, the home games are London's chance, aren't they? They've got to try and. You know how many games do you think they'd have to win realistically to stay up? You're looking at maybe nine or ten, maybe. Yeah. In total, so they've got three. They're gonna have to start winning pretty soon, aren't they? I think. Yeah. Uh, it's way too good, though, aren't they? They've, they're strong. I know. I know there was beaten by London uh, the opening Early game season. of the season. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's when London were flying high. They, they had uh, plenty of confidence, but I think. Wakefield are coming into their own now, and obviously Junior Sound, the new loan, loan signing, can uh, could potentially make his debut for the club. Uh, Shea says we need a versatile player that can play in a multiple positions. He was on about Knowles, yeah, and yeah. I can't think of a better player than Knowles. Well, yeah, uh, I think he could make a good number nine at international level, not as not as though uh, England need a good number nines. Or and, who, and, and, who, who and, would your number nines be for, for England? Um, I mean, you, you have to look at Hodgson, don't you, because he plays. Down under, um, Robert, Clark. Well, I mean, like McShane say, even. no, even. I mean, there's a lot. There's hook. I mean, McShane won't get anywhere near it. Horton, Danny Horton, Danny Horton probably won't get anywhere near it. And that's just that shows how good how good the options are that they won't. The other game this week, 
Huddersfield Hull KR. Hull KR had a good win last week this against Salford, but they, they sort of need to get... I, like I say, it's hard to look past London for relegation, but OK, I certainly need yeah. to get a few results on the board. They're, they're so inconsistent, OK. They're either really, really impressive or they, they get rolled. Mm. Uh, I was at the, I was covering the Salford OK game in the Challenge Cup last week at the AJ Bell, and the, it was so much, so much of a game of two halves. It, could, it couldn't be further apart because Hulkar were, were, were diabolical in the first half. They gave Salford everything. They gave Salford every chance to score. Uh, Salford didn't. Uh, I think it, they only led by six or eight points at half time, and then OKR came out in the second half, scored. I think it was 24 and had some points or something like that. Uh, blew Salford away. So it's, and it's that was a, and that was a reversal of when they played at OKR, wasn't it? Because yeah, Salford yeah. did exactly the same the other way around. Um, I think because Huddersfield are sort of struggling, really, really uh, struggling with injuries at the minute. They've only made, named an 18-man squad again this week. Uh, I'm going to go with a whole KR win there, I think. So, Super League, um, that's Super League rounded off. Championship Summer Bash this weekend in Blackpool. We got the short straw and we're in Barcelona instead, but I'm sure plenty of you will be going to the Summer Bash. So, uh, there's actually four games on both days and um, there's the women's origin game which kicks things off on the Saturday you've got Toronto against Toulouse which is the first game on the Saturday the first championship game on the Saturday which is an interesting one because Toulouse absolutely snotted Toronto when they met earlier in the season mm. um, so Toronto might have a few scores to settle on that one Toulouse generally I suppose you look at their games away from home are generally the ones where they struggle the most but having said that they have been picking up some decent results this season and certainly they're the two the top two in championship in, yeah. in terms of teams aren't they? Yeah. The, it should be a very good game, a very good uh, opening game as well to the summer bash. I'm, go I'm going for a Toronto uh, victory though against uh, Toulouse just because I think Toronto are, are just stronger than everyone else in the competition. Uh, so I'm going for the Wolfpack. The next game is Rochdale Hornets versus Swinton Lions, a little greater Manchester. Uh, diving between the pair, uh, this is a tough one because there's not much separation. Well, well Rochdale, side. Rochdale, of course, Boyd because they've got Matt Callan now as coach. Um, you know, a bit of revival. I mean, they know. Sides. I know they lost. They lost to York last week, but you know, a bit more. There's a bit more encouragement for Rochdale now at the moment. Swinton have probably played better than their results would suggest. They've had a lot of close mm. defeats against some of the better teams and. Um, you know, looking at the relegation picture, these are the game. These year, well, your stereotypical yeah. four pointers, aren't they? Yeah, I'm. Uh, are you going for it? I'll go, I'd go, I'll go Swinton. I think. I'll go Rochdale. I think Swinton. Okay, well, I'll go. I'll go Matt Callan's side. Don't let me down the Hornets. Uh, Featherstone York in the third game. This is. They're all tough games. I know. I know. It's. it's a cliche, yeah, I mean, but they're all tough uh, games, aren't they? Especially get, the top. They certainly like, the, uh, top, the, bash. the top eight and nine teams in Championship are very. I know obviously Toronto and Toulouse are probably a, a bit of a shoulder yeah. ahead of everyone else, but the rest of the games, the rest of the teams, there's not much to choose between them. Feverston haven't got a great record at the Summer Bash. But, the, um, but Dane Chisholm's been in good form yeah, since the start from Bradford, they, hasn't he? They, they're one of the teams that, you know, I, 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 fancy Feverston, I fancy Feverston on their day, it's just some weeks they just don't oh, turn yeah. up. Yeah. Um, uh, <coughs> I'd go I, Feverston I, I, I didn't think Fev would be that good this year, but they've, they've surprised me. Um, but I like York and, and they do some good, good things so I'm going to go with the, the Knights for this one I think and then the final game on the Saturday in Blackpool is Bradford against uh, Halifax this is a big clash obviously the, the pair have been drawn against each other in the quarter yeah, finals yeah. of the Challenge Cup I mean you were, I suppose you worry for Bradford is it a bit of a after the Lord Mayor show type thing with them beating Leeds last week um, Obviously, we had Bradford had, have had some decent games at the Bash. Um, you know, obviously they weren't in it last year, but you know, you remember that the game against uh, OKR a couple of years ago was it? Was it OKR? Yeah, well, yeah. when OKR were running away with the league basically, and and Bradford was struggling, and Bradford gave them a real tilt um, in the year they got. And Dane Chisholm actually was one of the players. It was absolutely booking it down. I remember, I, I was covering that match, and it absolutely teamed it down. And you know. The thing with Bradford is they'll bring plenty of fans to Blackpool as well, and they'll add to the occasion. And that's what you know. That's what the occasion, the occasion needs. Um, I think, I think I'll go Bradford though. 
Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go with Bradford. I Halifax, of course, still waiting well, to see what happens with their future having yeah. lost Richard Marshall. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how much last week's game against Leeds did affect the Bulls. Uh, mm. It might have took a, a lot out of the players uh, because it was a, a real bruiser of a contest yeah, at Onsel, but uh, yeah, it's, it should be a, a cracker. On the Sunday, the first game on the Sunday, Barrel Raiders against Sheffield Eagles. I think Sheffield. I think Sheffield have, have been have shown good quality this year, and um, Barrow are certainly one of them teams that are scrapping away. You fancy Barrow on their home turf, but of course um, they're in Blackpool, so um, yeah, fancy Sheffield for that one. I'm going with Sheffield. Sheffield has surprised me this season. Yeah, Mark, yeah. Aston, Mark Aston, he, he's a good coach. I've always admired his, his coaching because he's all, always done a good job with a little resource at the Eagles. But um, this season in particular, he's, he's built a good squad, hasn't he? And, uh, yeah, they, I mean, they're, 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 they're on fire, they're, aren't they? The, the, the Eagles are flying. They, they were they were a bit unlucky a couple of weeks ago. They were they lost to Lee late on, and I mean that would have made a bit of a difference if they'd have picked up a win there. But Sheffield certainly, you know, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that they finish top five. And you know, Mark, you know, Mark Aston has led Sheffield to two championship titles already. You know, <laughs> on your day, you only need, you know like what London did last year. It might seem unlikely, but on your day when you get in the playoffs, anything can happen. And. Um, to wrap up, uh, we've not done Batley, Batley Dewsbury. Oh, yeah, Batley Dewsbury, the heavy Holland derby. Our oh, mate Stephen Downs uh, will oh, yeah, be yeah, yeah, covering it, the, the media manager at Dewsbury. Um, I, I like Dew, to be honest. Dewsbury has surprised me as well. Dewsbury looked look, look very organised when I seen them. Um, you know, and I think they probably got, I think they look to have a bit more structure than Batley. Um, you know, I'm gonna go, go with yeah, the Yeah, I'll go Dewsbury as well. But Batley have disappointed me a little bit this year. I think it's, it, it, it's, it's well I think it's a, I think it's a tough one for Batley because they're sort of you would have almost put them. I think because the top seven, eight, nine teams have have, ri have rose the bar a little bit. I think Batley have maybe just got stuck in the middle and yeah. instead of being ca being sucked in by the top teams, they're getting sucked down yeah. to the to the lower teams. So. Um, but sorry, sorry for forgetting the heavy wool and derby. Yeah. Uh, and to wrap up uh, the summer bash at Magic Weekend is the big one. At Magic Weekend. Uh, Magic we uh, it's <laughs> summer bash uh, is at least Centurions against Witness Vikings. I, I mean, Witness. No Jack Owens for Witness, for Witness of course picked up a two-match ban for abusing uh, a match a official. Match yeah. official. Witness, uh, Witness beat Lee pretty comfortably at, at Witness, but um, you know. I, as Witness are out on a great run of form. I think they've lost, they've lost four of the last five. If you include the uh, cup game last week, no Anthony going for Witness. Um, well, of course, I think yeah, I, I think Witness are probably. Although Witness played well actually against Wakefield last week, but I'd imagine it'll be a lot closer than it was when they played uh, on Good Friday. Um, yeah, I, I go Witness. I think just. Um, and, and as we mentioned, Lee, we'll have to mention Dave. I'll, we're, we're seeing I'll, a I'll comment there. I'll go with Lee. I'll go with Lee. You're going with Lee for Dave. So Dave's not with us this week. Dave's in Serbia um, with the Lancashire, with the Barla Lancashire team. Um, they're on a tour of Serbia. They played. They played Red Star. They beat Red Star Belgrade today. Yesterday. You can read the report the on the Rugby League.com. Yeah. Um, uh, there's, there's a hell of a kit clash, which. Uh, oh, it's we it's, noticed the um, Red Star Belgrade yeah. and then they're playing a Serbian select team, I think, on um, to be fair, Sunday. To be fair, James, I'm glad that game weren't on telly because imagine imagine, <laughs> a, imagine a, a decision going to the video ref with them kicks. Click on the rugbyleague.com article, the match report. Now, I wanted to bring this up before obviously we wrap up. Um, Red, Red Star Belgrade obviously played in Challenge Cup, and you know Red Star Belgrade obviously a big football team in, in Serbia. You know they won the European Cup and, and sort of thing. We're here in Barcelona. Barcelona have the football team, but they also have a basketball team who we're going to watch actually on Sunday. A handball team, you know, all managed under the same brand, if you like. Red Star Belgrade are trying to sort of do a similar thing, and all they've got handball and a few other bits as well. Is that a potential way forward for rugby league, even to maybe? I think. Do you go after some of these franchises and try and tag on to your name of a Red Star Belgrade? One hundred percent, because I, the only reason I'm going to um, Barcelona basketball on uh, Sunday is because it's FC Barcelona. Yeah. If it, if it was just um, a not a basket a basketball team in Barcelona, I, I won't be bothered. 
But yeah. because it's FC Barcelona, it's got that. Uh, it's, Kudos. Yeah, and, it's, and obviously, it's got... you know, and if anyone's been to the new camp, it's literally all in the same. Yeah. In the same campus, if you like, they were the same badge, the yeah, same, the same kits. kits, yeah, yeah, yeah. So but sponsored by well, by Barcelona, sponsored by Nike because, as well. It's, because it's exactly the same. It's got that. It just entices you. That, because that, it, if, if you got to the point, if you got to the point where <coughs> you had the franchise type thing, you've obviously got this window of say May, June, July, August where there's not as much football, and you know rugby league could plug a gap there. But you've also got the women's football thing. So, like, obviously, women's football is just massively jumping on the back of the established men's, you know, teams and whatever. And it's like, well, if rugby league's smart and gets people in the right place, could it do the same sort of thing? And you know, Possibly. you know, it's a, it's certainly one to look at. But, but the, the, if you look, the women's game certainly improving since the women's super league comp uh, has been introduced, and and you can go and watch your likes of St. Helens, your Wiggins, your Warringtons, and Bulkers, whoever, yeah. uh, you can go and watch your club now rather than just no disrespect to the community game, but just watching an amateur club. Yeah, yeah you're watching yeah. players in your team's jersey now, yeah. uh, which I think is uh, much better, and it's much better for the for the females uh, participating in the, the su women's super league competition. Well, um, that's it from us for now. Um, please do leave your comments, like and share the post as normal. Um, if you want us to ask any questions or you want to know anything about the trip or what's happening at the new camp, um, please do let us know. <laughs> oh, hang on. We've got a few. We've got a few comments. Uh, David Tiller says, "Where's Dave? Where's Dave?" I seen that Siberia wasn't Siberia. a bad guess. He wasn't. He wasn't far off. It was Dealer. almost yeah. an anagram. Um, yeah, but Serbia is a Lancashire press officer. Uh, as Fred has just corrected. Morgan's asking, "Is there any place you can buy this year's Super League ball?" Well, we've got some lovely steam balls. I tell you what, Morgan, we'll send you a love rugby league steam ball. It's it's a gold one, limited edition. Um, send us your uh, send us your address in the on the Facebook page and the message in us. the yeah message us on the Facebook page and um, we'll get a ball. We'll get a ball sent out to you. That's steam one. Ian saying see you in what however you say Placer Real tomorrow. Ian. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. That's in the there's an Irish bar. Ian. We've already researched. You, are you buying drinks? Are you <laughs> drinks on you, Ian? Well, we're we're, well, we're working, but yeah, um, yeah. Business, so business. We, we'll we'll be on tomorrow probably as well. If you want us to chat about anything, please do let us know. Um, enjoy the game tonight, Leeds Cast on Sky, um, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.